Okay, today we're going to be taking a look at how you go about finding the domain of composite functions. And, and I do think I am going to break this into two videos. This will be part one of two, um, and just to keep the videos on the short side. All right, now before we uh, work out an example here, let's um, consider what we've got going on. All right, we're going to be given two functions, f of g, and technically they could be any names that you want. I just chose f and g. All right, if we are given two functions that are f and g, then um, our composite function is going to be denoted by this type of notation. And hopefully at this point, if you're trying to find the domain of a composite function, then you probably have worked with composite functions in the past, so this notation should look familiar to you. All right, over here on the left, if you're going to read that the correct way, you're going to say f is composed with g. Okay, that's how this is read. Um, this over here I generally read more along the lines of function notation, so f of g of x. All right, and most of the time, my preference would be this notation right here. Um, now, to give you a formal definition of the domain, okay, the domain of a composite function is the set of all numbers x in the domain of g such that g of x is in the domain of f. All right, now, just I just wanted to you know, give the formal definition there. This may uh, seem a little confusing at just reading it straight out. However, as we walk through this example, hopefully everything's going to fall into place, and then that's going to make sense to you. All right, so um, for this example right here, I've um, denoted here that we've been given a function f of x as 1 over x plus 2, and our g of x function here is 4 over x minus 1. All right, the only thing that I'm being asked to do here is find the domain of f of g of x. All right, so I'm going to break this down into three steps. All right, now, step one is going to be to find the domain of g of x. All right, or I really don't want you to memorize letters here, so find the domain of the inside function. Okay, so domain um, of the inside. Let's just write it like that domain of the inside function. All right, now, my inside function is my g function. Coming up here and looking at what my g function looks like, all right, that is a rational function. All right, if you recall how to find the domain of rational functions, you take the denominator, you set it equal to zero to find your exclusions values that um, are not going to be in your domain. So I'm going to do x minus 1 equals 0. I'm going to solve that equation. I'm going to get x equals 1. All right, now, keeping in mind that is an exclusion all right, so x cannot equal 1 because that's an exclusion from that domain. Okay, so now I've got what needs to be excluded from my inside function. All right, now my step 2, I am going to find the domain of my f function, or in this case, the outside function here. So I'm going to find, let's just put domain of the outside function. Because here again, I don't want you to memorize G or F because if they change the letters, then that wouldn't work anymore. So you're going to find the domain of your outside function. Okay, well, my outside function is this F of X function. And again, it's another rational function. All right, so I'm going to take that denominator and I'm going to set it equal to zero and come up with my exclusions. So then X plus 2 equals zero. Subtract 2 from both sides. X equals negative 2. All right, that is an exclusion. I cannot let X equal negative 2. Okay, so now I have what is excluded out of that domain right there. Okay, now for my step three. All right, I need to find where my inside function is equal to the domain of the outside function, basically. All right, so that I know what values that I need to be excluded there as well. Okay, so uh, my inside function is 4 over x minus 1. All right, and my um, domain for my outside function is a negative 2. So that means 4 over x minus 2 cannot equal negative 2, because if it does, I'm going to run into trouble here. So for step 3 here, um, let's try to put it in a sentence so that it makes sense. I'm going to want you to solve inside, my inside exclusion. I'm going to set that equal to the domain of the outside. Okay, doing it real generically there, so we're not using F's and G's, all right. So you're going to solve that. Um, here, let's finish the sentence. To find out what values to exclude. Okay, so my inside function. My inside function is that 4 over 
x minus 1. So 4 over x minus 1. All right, I'm going to set that equal to the domain of the inside. Well, I said the domain of my inside function there, I had to exclude negative 2. All right, so in other words, that cannot equal that. I'm going to solve that equation. Uh, multiply both sides by x minus 1. So 4 equals a negative 2 times x minus 1. Solve this nice little equation here. 4 equals negative 2x plus 2. Subtract 2 from both sides. This is just a bunch of algebra here. That would be a negative 2x. So x cannot equal negative 1. Okay. So now I have went through all of this. Okay. Now coming back over here to this you know, formal definition of what we did. Basically what that's telling us is that what we have excluded from our inside function, that's important, all right? And then what we have said when we've set the inside function equal to the domain of our outside, that exclusion is important. So these two values are what is going to be excluded from the domain of that composite function, okay? So let's write down here as a final answer, domain of our f of g of x, all right, so it's all other values on our number line. So from negative infinity to negative 1, that's okay, but we're going to exclude negative 1. Okay. And 1 to infinity. Okay, so everything in between negative 1 and 1 is good. We're excluding 1. Everything in between 1 and to positive infinity is going to be good. So for our overall domain of our composite function. All right, so three simple little steps. And here again, I would not memorize f and g because when they swap up the names of those functions, then you're going to need to be able to do it. Refer to them as your inside function and your outside side function for trying to memorize what you're doing here to find your, your domain of your composite function.